festival. Didn't you invite a load of people to your house? Fans to your house? I heard yeah. that on the radio yesterday or the day before, but I didn't know whether it was fiction or yeah. not. You, no, you, that's true. That's true? But yes. how do you select them? How do you get people to come around your gaff? Well, <laughs> basically, um, I got this idea before I finished the album, it, and I wanted to call it um, the 1989 Secret Sessions. Because I knew before I finished the album that I was most proud of this album more than anything I'd done before. And so I wanted to give fans a chance to hear it before it came out, like a month before it came out. And I'd never done this before. Mm. But I wanted it to be all fans who uh, had never met me before and had been like, I've been to seven shows, I've never met you, I camped out on the street, I waited outside, I never saw you, whatever. Like, I wanted it to be these people who have been so dedicated, but I've never gotten to thank them in person. We, 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 we didn't get it in, but John. No. Maybe <laughs> next, next time. But, but, I, just, time. but I just think, yeah. Taylor, you know, not to sound like worst case scenario Andrea, but <laughs> it sounds like a terrible idea. Yeah. <laughs> the worst, the worst <laughs> idea. It, was it all right? Well, so the way that... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Never doing it again. <laughs> the way the word you're looking for is no. <laughs> Actually... No, you, you had fun. You liked it. I found them on the internet. For the... Uh, <laughs> Tinder. Which is a... <laughs> <laughs> Tinder. But what you're talking about, Ken. I would go online, I would look at their Instagram pages or their Tumblr or their Twitter or whatever, and, um, and just kind of watch them for months and months. <laughs> and I'd go back. And then I invited them over and they came and they came and there have been like there have been uh, we've had them at every one of my houses and um, when did you first start having these feelings? <laughs> <laughs> Well, this is sweet, right? So the fans, because the fans who go to do it, they then, of course, want to blog about it because they've had this amazing experience. Of course, of course. But when they blog about it, it's borderline confusing on whether they had a good time or not. <laughs> so uh, here are some of the blog things. So we were asked to go to the living room, sit down, not know how much I was sweating during that moment. I was like, the fuck is going to happen? <laughs> could not keep up, then all of a sudden she just pops up out of nowhere, she appeared out of thin air like David Copperfield, and we all died, like, for real. <laughs> Wait, there's more. This one, this one. So she said she'll be playing her album for us. Let me tell you, the noise that came out of my mouth was not human. I legit, <laughs> I legit almost told Mama Swift to call me an ambulance, because I wasn't going to make it. <laughs> there's a, there's a, I then, love them so much because they always talk about dying. Dying, yes, yeah, I died. They're like, rest in peace, me, RIP, me. <laughs> I died dead. Yeah. Yeah. We took a little break, we took a little break, and she was passing around Rice Krispie treats and cookies. And I was talking to her mom for a little, and then I walked back in, and she was like, hey, babe, thanks for coming. Do you want a treat? And I was like, I would, but I think I'm dead. <laughs> This one, oh, this is brilliant. Mid-sentence, she stopped talking and pointed to Amanda and said, Amanda, I'm so glad you're here. Amanda died right there. She died. <laughs> <laughs> and, and finally, finally, uh, guys, just wait for the one she did with Imogen Heap, because, damn, that one slayed everyone to heaven and back. While listening to the song, I literally had to plan my <laughs> funeral arrangements because I wasn't going to make it. Now, I'm not suggesting that any of you are actual criminals, but... We are. All I'm saying is, watch yourself around Rihanna. Now, Rihanna, I don't know if you know... <laughs> I don't know if you know how criminal you are. OK, let's just look at this picture. Did you ask permission from the club when you left holding <laughs> this glass? That's funny. Yeah. I don't that think might have been one that I took to the club. <laughs> yeah. Oh, she uh, took What it. about this one? What about this one? Crystal. Did you yeah. ask about that glass? <laughs> That looks I'll just speed it up. <laughs> uh, what about familiar. this one? What about this one? Did you ask about that one? <laughs> That's, That's the same one. Down. That's coming out of my wages. That's the same one. <laughs> <laughs> OK, what about this one? Uh, there you are leaving the fashion show. They... I took that back to the hotel that I took it from. Of course did you did. You? Yeah. Uh, this one. Uh, there's another one. <laughs> there's another one. And sometimes you don't even bother to seal the glass. <gasps> just a ball. <laughs>
We've never seen that glass again. My mom is going to see this. Bruno Mars, and this will surprise you that I've done this much research. Uh-oh. I hear it's not your real name. It's not my real name. It's not his real name. <laughs> they caught me. OK, that's all for tonight. <laughs> 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 so what were you? What were you called? Uh, Peter. Peter. So yeah. where did the Bruno come from? Bruno, I was a chubby baby, and there was a wrestler in my dad's day named Bruno Sammartino. I don't oh, know if you're yeah. familiar yeah, with Bruno. I do know. I remember that yeah. wrestler, yes. And he was a stocky guy, and I used to walk around like a little bulldog, my dad said, so he'd always call me Bruno Sammartino. Mars just kind of came joking around in the studio. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Saying I'm out of this world. Yeah. <laughs> and I, well, people don't realize, they might have thought we were being stupid playing uh, Billionaire when you come on, but you, you wrote Billionaire and you, you've written loads of songs apart from... Yeah, quite a few this year. Yeah. Now, call me lazy, <laughs> but isn't that a much better way to go? Just write songs for other people. You make um, the money, you don't have to do the stupid touring. You know what it is? I love that. <laughs> <laughs> well, what other songs have you written? Come on, tell us, because Billionaire was a huge uh, hit, wasn't I it? I wrote Thriller, uh, Purple Rain, um, I'm just... <laughs> Man, he's going wild. Well, that is yeah, impressive. Right. Yeah. 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 yeah, happy um, birthday, wait, that's can we see if this... <laughs> happy birthday, <laughs> Can we see if, if this is a wig? <laughs> It's not a wig, but it's definitely been in that thing. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I recently did a song for CeeLo called F.U. I don't know oh if you guys heard that. Oh, my God. That was you. That's a great yeah. song. Oh, that's amazing. I'm sorry. You hear that? Why would you... I'm obsessed with that song. Boss. Obsessed. Thank Why you. would you give that song away, though? Because you're a singer and a solo artist. Well, Why know, would you it, it give it away? It wasn't given away. We, were, we had a session uh, booked with him, and I, we started jamming, and that was the song we came up Have with. Have you heard another. this song? No. It's what? <laughs> it's extraordinary. I'm... This is a great song. Oh, if only we I'm had someone on here that could stuff. sing it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, give us a burst. I see you driving around town with some girls I love, and I'm like... Thank you. <laughs> How cool is that? Yeah. 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 with Neil Armstrong through music that you discovered he liked this particular bit of music. Is this true? Right, yeah. The theremin. The, the theremin? Yeah. Theremin. Mm -hmm. I think we've got the... Do you want to tell us about the... Wh where did you find this music? How did you I find just, it? I love the theremin, and I was happy to find out that Neil loved the theremin. I was looking for ways to connect to him, and, you know, uh, he's a... A genius who's filled with you know incredible courage and he's a master in many things and I was looking for a connection there and then I thought theremin and so I, I brought that to the director and there was a, a this really beautiful piece of music called Lunar Rhapsody uh, music from the moon and uh, Neil and Janet were they loved it in, in, in college it was kind of their song and you know having no idea that what their lives would become and that the moon would be so involved yeah with their lives but um, we ended up using it in the film, and, and then the composer took the theremin and, and learned how to play it, and a lot of our score is theremin-based now. It's really beautiful. That's beautiful. So this is a little bit of the lunar... What's it called? The lunar... Oh, Rhapsody. Lunar Rhapsody. <laughs> That's the theremin. It's a good yeah. telly, this, watch yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, but uh, now here's the thing: there's a weird link with theremin, with Doctor Who, because the Doctor Who theme has the theremin in it, doesn't it as well? Yeah, I can't play it. Oh, can't you? <laughs> That's annoying because I've got a theremin. <laughs> uh, well, I do. I got a theremin. Uh, now uh, I think this is on, so we don't have to do anything to it. Uh, oh, look! Yeah, yeah, oh, it's on. It's Ooh. on, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> now, if I if I if I, if I shove the things up here, okay. Should we help you? Okay. No, no, you're good, you're good. Thank you, though. Um, so, that bit, so this is, keeps it quiet. Have you played one of these before? I have not. So I've, he that, I've heard about it, though. So that keeps it quiet, okay, and then you take that off. It's like dolphins. I mean, I wouldn't go to a concert of it. <laughs> <laughs> can, you play, can you play a song on it? I don't know. Give it a whirl. Give it a whirl, Lady. Lady Gaga on the third. I think I have to like. Kneel. <laughs> 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 okay. Is it your name? Oh. oh. Yes. <laughs> 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 
Okay, so let's get the let's get the Doctor Who da da da. Sorry. Okay. So don't worry about it. Cover of Time magazine. Uh, yeah. Like that. Have you been on Time magazine? I have been in Time magazine. <laughs> yeah. Anyone done the cover? No. No. I mention, I mention. Just <laughs> so, uh, and you also you, you had the honor of speaking at the United Nations. Yes. Sir. <laughs> yeah. Yes, sir, we did. And, and was that that was kind of part of uh, BTS's message? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I just want to say that, you know, life always had the dilemmas of, you know, we always ha have to have the pain inside because when, when the light comes, we always have the shadows. And we cannot be avoided from that. So I just want to tell that um, um, we should find the way to love ourselves of our own. Then, of course, especially the youth going to be more happy and we, we could live a good life. So that was the message. Yeah. yeah. People are really, really people are really, really responding to that message. I'm giving them my shirt. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. It's on this shirt. Yes. There we go. Hey. Lovely. Um, there we go. <laughs> Things I didn't think I'd be doing today. <laughs> uh, arm dressing would be go over. <laughs> and I'm giving you this to say thank you for thank you. all of the thank you all of the joy you're bringing. Oh, and so wow. This. Wow. This is wow. Wow. This is, so this is my wow. design. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and if you look closely, it's all about movement and people. It's all it's for you. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Oh, that's wow. so lovely. Okay, that's that. I'm going to get a scholarship to King's College. I probably shouldn't brag, but dag, I'm amazed and astonished. The problem is I got a lot of brains, but no polish. I got to holler just to be heard with every word. I drop knowledge. I'm a diamond in the rough. I shine a piece of coal trying to reach my goal. My power of speech, unimpeachable, only 19, but my <laughs> mind is older. These New York City streets get cold. I shoulder every burden, every disadvantage I've learned to manage. I don't have a gun to brandish. I walk these streets famished. The plan is to fan this spark into a flame, but damn, it's getting dark, so let me spell out the name. I am the A-L-E-X-A-N-D-E-R. We are meant to be a colony that runs independently. Meanwhile, Britain keeps shitting on us endlessly. <laughs> Essentially, <laughs> they tax us relentlessly. Then King George turns around and runs a spending spree. And he ain't ever gonna set his descendants free. So there will be a revolution in this century. And to me, he says in parentheses, don't be shocked when your history book mentions me. I will lay down my life if it sets us free. Eventually, you'll see my ascendancy. And I am not throwing away my shot. It's something like that. Oh. Wow. <laughs> I've got a picture of you at the Oscars, the night of the Oscars. And so this diamond. Oh my this, god, I that... look I look just like that right now. It's so weird. It's, it's uncanny. <laughs> uh, but that is the diamond. That diamond is in the middle of that breakfast at Tiffany's necklace. Yeah, so that diamond was in a, a necklace that Audrey wore for press for breakfast at Tiffany's. And then the diamond was put into a different setting, and it's it's this priceless diamond that Tiffany's had, and they they offered it to me to wear at the Oscars, and I was, you know, 
the street kid in me from New York was like, <laughs> hell yeah, I'm going to wear that big thing. <laughs> but does it not kind of wreck your night? Because presumably you've got security guards under each armpit and there's like, there's people crawling all over Graham, you. Graham, I already thought I had too much security before I put that diamond on. And then I put that diamond on and I was like, am I the president? Like, I didn't really know what was going on. And it, it was really funny because I really didn't know what was going to happen that night. I was just excited to be there. You know, that's mostly generally how I feel at these events is like, oh, I'm just happy to be here, right? And so then I won an Oscar and I was so excited and I'm having champagne and I'm drinking. And my sister was my date. So, you know, like we're really barreling through the champagne backstage with the Oscar and I just leave and I, I leave with the diamond on and I, I didn't tell anyone, like I just left and <laughs> Tiffany started freaking out. They were like, she's gone. She, she left with the diamond. And actually I went to go hang out with Madonna at her manager's house and I got to the house and I was, I was just chilling with Madonna while like all these security guards were like, <laughs> just side-eyeing me from, you know, every corner of the room. And every time I hugged someone, they, they would like, like get a little closer to make sure it was still on. And then, and then I left and I really wanted to go to Taco Bell. So we were trying to go to Taco Bell. And then all of a sudden the car got pulled over by Tiffany's security. And it was very politely moved, removed from my neck. was nearly over now too. Yeah, I'm uh, graduating, I finish uh, I kind of mark my school differently. Most people do it semesters. I do it by movies or tours. So at the end of the next movie is when I'm done with school. How do they discipline you at school? So if you like, if you get like a bad grade, you're like, oh, you've got to see, what are you going to do about that? Mm, go and do a movie. I go and do a movie. <laughs> <laughs> my teacher, it's actually weird because I'm a little bit of a workaholic. She threatens my work permit. She's like, I yeah. will not sign it if you don't do it. And I'm like, it. She's here. You can beg her if no, you want. Is she really here? Yeah. Your teacher follows you around? You have no idea. She pops up in places that I'm like, I can, why are you here? I'll be in the elevator. <laughs> I'll have no idea. I'll go all the way from the States to here and have no idea she's there. And she'll pop up and be like, are you ready for school? <laughs> and, oh, the last time, he's obviously Justin Bieber. She got on to Justin the last time we were at Good Morning America or The View. She was like, is your teacher here, Justin? Have you done your school today? Do you need me to sign your permit? And I was like, you're embarrassing me in front of the beebs. And my little sister was like mortified. She's sort of half teacher, half stalker. Yeah. <laughs> Mostly irritating. Yeah. How, how old is Justin Bieber? 15? He's 16. He's 16. Yeah. And you manage him? No, no, no. Actually, my partner manages him. But it's your label he signed to? Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. We, uh, we managed to run across him. Uh, on the internet. Um, YouTube is how we discovered him. Really? You know, I have a really, really great story to share with you. Oh, yes. We met, where were we? I think AMAs. We were at the okay. AMAs, and I'm like, on oh, Molly. I'm like, listen, I got this kid. I'm telling you, trust me, this kid is going to be huge. You better call me back. I'm going to give you my number. Let's talk. Let's figure it out. So she just kind of brushed me actually, off. Actually, I believe you. I gave you my <laughs> number, and I never got well, a text. No, we, actually, I did send a text. I didn't get a response. Ooh, I, I, I changed my number quite frequently. I'll do that again. <laughs> and now apparently... <laughs> and now apparently it's everywhere that I'm dating Justin Bieber. So, you know, he prank called me, not realizing the time difference yesterday yeah. at, like, 3 o'clock in the morning. And you are about to have no more Bieber fever because I was about to kill. He kept ringing. <laughs> So the real Justin Bieber was calling you at 3 o'clock in the morning? Yeah, and I thought it was, I was like yelling because I thought it was someone that got, because my number gets out. That's probably why I didn't respond. It's because I changed it. So I changed my number, and he kept pranking me. And I really did believe it was like a kid or something. So I was like, I can't really yell because I think it's a kid, but I'm not really sure. So finally I was like, it's 3 o'clock in the morning. And he's like, ha, 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 it's Bieber. Call me back. And I was like, oh, my gosh, I'm going to hurt this kid. No matter how much my little sister loves him, I'm going to kill him. This is Justin Bieber, everybody! Genius, thank you very much. It's fantastic. Thank you for doing that. Uh, big congratulations. Thank you. Uh, that's all. It's number one everywhere, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah. No, and that must be like, it must be a relief. Because no, you've got to bring out new material, and yeah. It feels really good to just have people accept the, the music and, and not be about, you know, my personal life, but be about the music. And that's why I started in the first place. So it feels really good, because... I'm growing up, and my music is growing up, and yeah. it just feels fun. Yeah. And you're out here, and you're busting a move. Do you find Thank that, you. like, because obviously you, you, the voice was why we know you. Yeah. Is that easy for you, the dancing stuff? It, honestly, what's hard is, is singing and dancing and trying to breathe all at the same time. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm forgetting to breathe, because I'm so conscious of, like, the moves and my voice. That, 
but I'm getting better at it. Good. We don't want to lose you, not on my watch. No. OK. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and that song, what do you mean? I like it, because it's your little cry from the heart yeah. to the women of the world. Yeah. Because you don't know what they mean. Is that the thing you don't... I never know what they mean. I never <laughs> know what they mean. But all boys don't know what girls mean. Yeah, that's why we needed an anthem. <laughs> <laughs> I have just boys walking down the street, what do you mean? <laughs> the next time you're in an argument with, with anyone, just be like, yo, what do you mean? <laughs> See, that's the great thing about boys. You know exactly what they mean. Uh, it's, it's all good. Now, new album, uh, yep. Purpose, that's out November the 13th. Yep. Very good. Thank you. Uh, yeah, no, it is. Hey, that's the thing. And uh, presumably you'll come back and tour with this, won't you? Yeah, I'll be back. Oh, I'm going to actually come back to London and tour here as well. Oh, excellent. Ed, uh, please come and see us again, Justin. We love having you here. Oh. Thank you so much. Thank you. Justin Bieber, everybody! And, wow, that's a <laughs> lot of silver. Uh, are you very hot? I feel a little bit like a rotisserie chicken, but <laughs> other than that, it's all good. <laughs> yeah. Sounding great, looking fabulous. Thank you. Uh, now, the new single, that's Don't Start Now, we just heard, that's out now, right? Yes. It and is. album? The album's coming next year. Oh, it's next year? Yes. Oh, but I'm, I'm you'll so cynical. find out the title in a month, and it's like a very like nostalgic, disco orientated album. Ooh. And. Um, once the album title's out next month, I feel like it'll make a lot more sense. And uh, since you were last here, mm -hmm. uh, like Dame Julie Andrews, you now have two Grammys. Wow. Yes. Wow. Uh, um, you, you, you performed them. Did you perform them in I did, yeah. So what is that? I mean, that must be so stressful oh, to be up yeah. for awards oh, and having to perform and it's all live. It's terrifying, yeah. honestly. Must be. Um, and I only found out I was going to perform on the Grammys a week before the Grammys. Oh, mm. yeah. So I was like, oh, my God, what am I going to... I literally didn't have time to think about anything. I was just like, OK, I'm going on the Grammys. Don't mess this up. <laughs> so where's the Grammy now? Oh, yes, good oh, question. Yes. It's at home. Where? Um, in the attic? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it, it's it's in my living room. Nice. Oh, good. But both of them, right? Yes. Yes, you have got both. I do. Are they beside each other or are they nice? Are they bookends? No, what they're next to each other. No. They'd be lonely otherwise. They would they? be really lonely. Yeah. <laughs> What's one Grammy? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, I'm sure there are more Grammys in your future. Thank you for that fabulous performance Thank and you so uh, good much. luck That's with the album. Nice. Do a leap, everybody! <laughs> Woo! I've heard you talking about the album and you say this is a really kind of up, happy, poppy album. Yeah. I mean, not every song on the record is happy and upbeat and poppy, but I really wanted to reclaim my happiness because I feel like I've been through things and haven't we all? Yeah. And after some self reflection, I realized pop music makes me really happy, and so I'm gonna do it. And I just accepted that I'm kind of a cheesy bitch that loves pop music. Yeah. And I am not gonna be happy. You know, as a as a woman, what you went through, uh, you know, professionally, personally, it's just awful. And at that moment at the 2018 Grammys. When all the other female artists got up. Oh my god. That must have just, as a viewer, it was, you know, really? it made you shiver. I, I like still can't even look at that picture without getting oh, weirdly emotional because it was this moment in the music business where w women are always pitted against each other. And it was us saying, no, no, we're going to come together and uh, have each other's backs. And it just felt like the most beautiful moment I've ever experienced in my entire career. And, uh, this, once it was announced you were on the show, my yeah. Twitter feed obviously became very, very busy oh. uh, with uh, <laughs> tweets from people like them. And, uh, just, so, uh, just, for, just for Harry? There was nobody else? <laughs> On the yeah, Nobody. I mean, obviously, yeah. there were a lot for you guys, oh. but uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh. quite insisted. Um, uh, because, no, because the, the, there's things like uh, what? So everyone wanted me to ask you about the island of Erota. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> This is you never asked me about the no, no, no. <laughs> I'm a jungle. Very similar to it's North a... Korea, actually. <laughs> uh, in a lot of ways. So what, um, so what is the island of Aroda? How do they know that it's got anything to do with so you? So the island of, island of Aroda is a, it's a fictional island. 
Gotcha. Uh, we got some budget for this album campaign, so <laughs> we made an island, and uh, it's from the music video for that song, oh. uh, which is called Adore You, and Aroda is a girl back this. Got it. Oh. You like yeah. that? Then like yeah. That. <laughs> yeah. They so, made an island. They made an island. I mean, you know, I mean that's, that's you know, an album's one thing. That is yeah, quite, yeah, I brought out my new island. Something else. You adopted an animal. Ah, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I adopted a cheetah actually when I was in Kenya. Okay. Wow. Yeah, a little baby cheetah. Mm. Oh. Pretty cute. There we go. Oh. Actually, in fairness, that is very cute. Very, very, very cute. cute. Yeah, 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 yeah. Tried to bring him to London. Said it wasn't possible. <laughs> Correct. Yeah. Correct. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, I, I called him Tiny as well, which is, is nice. like, That would be so gangster fabulous it was, <laughs> to be walking down Hampstead with a cheetah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Who's that? I believe it's Tiny Temper. <laughs> but, yeah, no, I, I was really happy to do that. We went to a Ni Nairobi Reserve Park. Oh, OK. And, um, yeah, it was a pretty great experience. Mm. And then also, on the flip side, I'm kind of into taxidermy. I don't know if this is going <laughs> to... I don't know if it's going <laughs> to... When you say the flip side, <laughs> yeah, try explaining that to Tiny. Right. <laughs> right. No, but you're only too if, small oh, right now. No, <laughs> but later. No, only if they only if they say that they've like ever died of natural causes. But to be honest, I don't know what it is. I think it's just maybe African roots or whatever. But I really love the idea of being surrounded by um, exotic animals. So in my house, I have like a zebra, and I have a giraffe as well. Wow. But not like a real one, but like a... It was real before. Yeah. Like, <laughs> a, dead, a dead one. No, yeah. One, one, yeah, a dead one. Yeah. Yeah, that died of, like, natural... Like, the flu and stuff. Yeah, I know. Yeah. They do. They do. Yeah. Yeah. A sore throat. A sore throat with a giraffe is serious. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's, yeah it really. fatal. It's really bad. Yeah. You've got high ceilings, then, in your house? Very. Yeah. 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 Always, always drinking. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> Anyone that died drinking? Who in the council house? And I mean, you got a giraffe that was soft. <laughs> that died in its sleep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they never do that with animals, do they? They never have taxidermied animals. They're just like ah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a bear, like that. Uh, like, they just kind of go. Uh. <laughs> I want to do with me. I want to taxidermy. You can have me. Yeah. <laughs> it's just me like that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on this sofa. I'm like, here is me. Here is me. Here is me. Here is me. Because uh, Cher, your your mom is still with us. Yes. Uh, now this it's not funny, but I do think a brilliant bit of advice that you should share is her five year rule. If it doesn't matter in five years, it doesn't matter. Isn't that a yeah, good thing great. to... Th if right. something bad happens, you kind of think, will I care about this? Right, and so I... It, and it always helps me. It always comes in handy. No, I read that, and I just thought, that Brilliant. is actually a advice. genius yeah. piece of advice. Yeah. Really, really good. And I wonder, did she come up with that uh, <laughs> thinking when you were a teenager? Because you were quite a wild child, I would say. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I was wilder when I was nine years old than I ever was as a teenager. Okay. I ran away from home, I stole a horse, I jumped on a freighter, and kept going until my girlfriend started crying for her mother. Oh, how did you get back? I called my mother. <laughs> <laughs> but, but this is, no, like, you say you... How will, this is, this is shares, I don't know if it's your only, but it's certainly your first mug shot. How old Oh, my you? God, that's not true! <laughs> that's not true. It's, I did it, but I didn't get arrested for it. What's that from, then? That's from my school picture when the, um, eighth grade. <laughs> they just put that. I swear to God, I'll, I would cop to it if it was true. Why um, did it say Los Angeles police in front of you? <laughs> because some like rag magazine thought oh, it was funny, okay. and okay. I actually did too. But <laughs> so, all right, this I learned how to drive when I was eleven. So my girlfriend not wild, really. <laughs> no, no, my grandfather taught me. It wasn't a big deal. So my friend had a boyfriend. And he said he had to go in. We were at a bowling alley. He said, I have to go in. I have to say something to a friend. I'll be there for four seconds. And we waited and we waited, and he didn't come out. And so then the girl said, Cher, you know how to drive. Let's just drive around the parking lot. And I said, okay. And then he didn't come out. So, Cher, let's just drive around the block. And so he didn't come out, and I just thought, well, 
this, I, <laughs> I'm gonna take us out. And so we went to a drive-in to get something to drink and we got arrested. <laughs> but not exactly arrested, just taken to jail. <laughs> no, honestly, just, just taken to jail. Just with a warning. Katy Perry, Katy Perry, you, I mean, you must be the hottest female artist in the world right now. Are you enjoying the moment? Are you just kind of along for the ride? Or do you look at someone like Paul and you kind of think, I would like that legacy. I would like people to be singing my songs in 40 years. Of course. I think that's the correct answer is I'm in it for the long haul. I want to have a career. I hope to have half the career that you... Ha have or, or whatever twice. I'd be so grateful I mean <clears throat> I think you've been doing this for uh, longer you know than I've even been alive and you've been doing it so incredibly well and the fact that you're still here today uh, in 2013 yeah. No, you said that. And you're, <laughs> the fact that you're not dead. <laughs> no, I'm not talking in that sense. I'm talking about as a performer, he's about to be on this stage, just released an incredible record. Yeah. I mean, not everybody does it. I think there's like a handful of people that still can do that well. Yeah, it's very it's true. You brought it back. You brought it back. Good. Yeah. I mean, who's more sick than I am? Uh, talking of big fans of people, uh, David Schimmer, you are a big man. Oh, yeah, huge. I mean, yeah, yeah. Oh. Fallen, Fallen is one of my... For real? For real. Your head is in our way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Are you, are you uh, in concert in London, I assume, this summer, then? I am. I'll be there. All right, because I'll be there. I'll be in Manchester, I'll be, I'll be in there. London. You come to all of them. Come to Dublin, too. Come to Germany. Come wherever you want to come. I'll be in London. <laughs> <laughs> Very big fan. Uh, yeah. no, he has things to do. He's busy right now. Do you go back to Ireland much? Is that, do you cause a huge sensation when you go back? Is it Mullingar? Yeah, Mullingar, yeah. yeah. Uh, I go home like a couple of times a year. It gets, uh, my dad still lives in the same spot. <clears throat> so it gets kind of hectic around the house. The girls live in holes in the garden and things. Yeah, I remember. <laughs> I remember. <laughs> yeah. One of all. I remember Robbie Williams once said something to me. He was like, my mum closed the curtains in 92 and never opened them again. <laughs> 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 I get it. <laughs> so, yeah, but, yeah, like, it's good. I get to go home and, you know, go see the lads and stuff like that and see the family, and it's, yeah, I, li I like that side of it. Um, but, yeah, it's Miss Ireland. Obviously, yeah. we'd like to go there a lot more, but... And do people kind of... Do they look out for you kind of going, oh, he's changed, or is it all that? Do you have to be incredibly careful when you go uh, home? So, sometimes, like, you'd, you'd be in there and you'd be like... As, there's kind of, like, the backpacking thing there. You'd be buying, like, a pint... You know, be buying a pint for two or three of the lads, and then, you know, the barman would be going, oh, someone's doing all right, and he's doing good. <laughs> it's like, it's only a few pints. I don't know if it's, uh, it makes any difference. Um, but, yeah, like, sometimes if I'm walking home, right, I'll walk home if they're just, say, if I'm home around Christmas and there's no taxis, and I'll start walking home, and then the, the police will walk, drive past me and pick me up and bring me home. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when they used to do that for a different reason. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, they do I, was, you know, I was drinking a bit, you know. <laughs> I was thinking, big sofa, in it, that superstars. Yeah, yeah. Well, and you. Yeah. Storms is here. You know, uh, we live really close to each other. Is it? Where do you live? Yeah, I live in Kingston. Oh, so I live in Kingston. My mum sees you walk your dog all the time. Oh, uh, is it? Come back, come, do you want a cup of tea? Oh, I saw Stormzy today. Oh, uh, is it? Yeah, I'm out here, I'm out here. And uh, now, Gwyneth, your children will be very excited. Yes, my children are big fans of Oh, uh, is it? Yeah. Oh, wicked, that's it. That's <laughs> hard. Do you know what it is? Like, this is, this is a big sofa, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's, a, that's, a, that's like a... Yeah. Uh, I'm, get, I'm, going up, I'm going up in the world. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've got the H-bomb at the end. Exactly. Yeah. 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 H-bomb is that. Let him that linger there for a while. <laughs> <laughs> I've read, Will, that you have uh, this amazing amount of music that you haven't released, but tracks with extraordinary artists like Michael Jackson and Prince and people like that. Will you ever release those tracks? Uh, no, because, you know, especially artists like Michael Jackson where... Working with Michael Jackson is his critique and his two cents. So, you know, without him guiding on completing it, it's not my right to, to do that. He was a friend, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that. And what was the story that you brought Michael Jackson and Prince yeah. to? Yes. <laughs> you, you brought Michael Jackson and Prince together. Yeah, so one time we had a show in, um, in Vegas, 
And Michael Jackson called. Hey, what's Michael? <laughs> okay, Mike. Yeah, so I heard you guys are doing a show tonight. But yeah, we go on at 9 o'clock. Oh, rats, I gotta put the kids to sleep. So I was like, well, we, I'm performing with Prince later on at 12. So anyways, Michael came to see me rock with Prince. And it was, a, it was a magnificent night to see. It was me, Chris Tucker, and then watching me, Chris Tucker, Michael Jackson, watching Prince rock on stage. So to make a long story short, Prince steps off the stage and plays the bass in Michael Jackson's face. <laughs> Rips the freaking bass in 10 different pieces. Da -da -da -da. Make a longer story shorter, Michael Jackson leaves and goes home and says, leave me in the house for breakfast. So I go to his house for breakfast, knock on the door. First words he says, why well, was Prince playing the bass in my face? Lights <laughs> <laughs> out like a power out. Oh! Oh! oh. I could feel the mist every time we kiss. Just didn't know a downpour like this. Oh. There's a there's a flash food warning. <laughs> Will it will rain in the morning? There'll be puddles in the bed. I don't want to get too much. Oh. No. Hey, wait. There'll be puddles. No, 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 wait. Let me finish. Let me finish. Our question to the off. The, the words was, there'll be puddles in the bed, the weatherman said. Yeah, but. Why were there puddles in the bed? Yeah, wait a minute. Was she an what older lady? What is that? Was she... Whoa! <laughs> no. uh, listen, uh, girl, I've got, the, I've got the lyrics. Girl, the weatherman said, it's cloudy skies right there between your thighs. <laughs> I want it soaking wet all over the bed. <laughs> Did you sing these lyrics? He wrote them. Hey, man. <laughs> So now, uh, you would think, you would think that people would just see this beautiful garment on the, on the World Wide Web and you just admire it, kind of, it doesn't Rihanna look lovely, but of course they can't, they, they do uh, compare it, as you said, to uh, this, to <laughs> omelette. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a new they, one. They also, they also turned it into uh, a pizza. <laughs> <laughs> but perhaps most delicious of all, a Ginster's beef slice. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Last time I was here, I did my Fresh Prince rap. Eight million YouTube hits was on that. I can see your face, you like, what has he left? Well, this time I brought my DJ, Jazzy Jeff. No! <laughs> Jazzy Jeff, everybody! Yeah! Let me hear everybody, here we go! What's that, Jeff? Here we go, here we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now this is a story all about how my life got flipped turned upside down. I'd like to take a minute and just sit right there. I'll tell you how it became the prince of a town called Bel Air. Hey, hey! West Philadelphia, born and raised. On the playground is where I spent most of my days. Unlikely encounters, because this was all in the papers. Because uh, your your little oh no, wait, come on. Well, just because what we read in the I papers. Got, I got cut up. Yeah, I got cut up. So this yeah. was the was it? Do you think rugged, right? I <laughs> see that. I can't wait to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> so was it Beatrice or Eugene? Wait, I can't talk about it. Oh, can you not talk about it? No. Oh, no, OK, sorry, no. I'll shut up. Was it a no. hat accident? It was, it, was James Blunt. <laughs> it was James Blunt trying to get his pop career back. <laughs> he tried to kill you. <laughs> How did it end up in the papers? I don't know. There wasn't a lot of people there that night. Wait, I have no idea. Yeah, I'm I really wasn't. You can't tell the story. I, I can't tell the story. You can say allegedly what happened. OK, allegedly, <laughs> uh, one of the princesses... Eugenie or Beatrice? James Blunt. One of them. And James Blunt and Ed Sheeran were in a room presumably in a palace, and uh, <laughs> James Blunt allegedly wanted to be knighted. 
Is that a euphemism? And, uh, <laughs> and so one of the princesses found a handy sword to what? knight him. Did you not read this in the papers? Well, I, did, I didn't know James Blunt was involved. <laughs> but up to that point, I... Anyway, there was a bit of sword play and Ed Sheeran got cut in the face. Is that right? No. <laughs> <laughs> Do you, know, do you know what? I, I, have, I have no idea how that story came out. I have no idea, cos, like, it was so tight. It was so, and, like, for, like, two weeks afterwards, I had this huge gash on my face and people would be like, oh, what happened? You'd be like, oh, I fell. <laughs> <laughs> and then suddenly it came out. That They're is... alleged. Manji, <laughs> it's a jungle inside your soul. <laughs> Somewhere deep inside, at the end of the world. <laughs> <laughs> yes! Yes! Beautiful. Yeah. You <laughs> and survival, your only goal. Yeah. Plunge the jewel inside. Say the name of the game. There we go. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Jumanji, <laughs> Jumanji, Jumanji. Thank you. Well, we were shooting Maestro, and Steven Spielberg's one of our producers on the film, and we were working very closely with his producer, Christy Krieger, who's our producer on the film, and Marcus had been up all night with one of our children who had COVID, so he was a little bit kind of... Spacey, but anyway, he rang me and he was like, I haven't really slept, but I really need a music video. And it's like, rude to see if Steven Spielberg would ever do it. <laughs> and I said, well, I don't know. That's like, he's, I don't think he's ever done a music video. Anyway, so I called Christy and I said, is it rude to ask <laughs> if Steven Spielberg? And she said, I don't think so. I think like it's... So she asked him and then Steven and Marcus met and then Steven directed his music video. Now, whatever oh. you think, that looked like Steven Spielberg directing a music video. You probably didn't think it looked like this. Uh, that is <laughs> Steven Spielberg in the office chair. Yeah. Uh, is that his wife, Kate Capshaw? That's Kate, yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. She was that... an amazing dolly grip. Like, she really was. It was like the perfect illustration of marriage as well, because she totally... She just had it. She was amazing at, like, pulling the office chair. Wow. And the best bit was... So, in the, and it's really... It's, it's, if you watch the video, it's all... We, the whole thing is, like, we've got three days and an iPhone and no budget, so yeah. Steven Spielberg's obviously the first person you think of. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and, and there's a bit where... So it comes out for ages, it starts on and close, and then it, all of a sudden it goes, like, whoosh, in. So for that bit, Steven would just lift up his legs <laughs> and Kate would just push him really fast. Oh, It'd be God. like, go, whee! <laughs> Steven Spielberg, and it was very cool. Uh, so, the next video, next video. Uh, Dua Lipa, your family do a lot of these things. Your family have a lot of rules. Well, not a lot of rules. We just have superstitions. OK. Uh, <laughs> run us through... Run us... Th so, if your nose... If your nose itches... Oh, if your nose itches, you're going to get angry about something. But in order to combat that, you have to, like, itch your nose and then touch your bum. <laughs> oh, my God, this is brilliant! <laughs> We should all do it. Time out. So, like, if, for example, you get a random itchy nose, you just you itch your nose, and, and then you just bum. you know you touch your bum. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, you <laughs> you touch other and then you touch. No, touch you don't touch. Other no. Bums. Unless, of course, they want <laughs> you to. Yeah. <laughs> In which case, go for it. But you're getting angry because you're not you're you're not allowing no, you're not yourself getting... to itch your nose. No, you're, and you're not... feeling like an idiot. No, you're not getting um... angry. You're not getting angry. It's just like a random itch on your nose happens, okay. which is like a sign that. You're, You've got to You're touch going your bum. to get angry, so you just go, oh, hello, little itch, and then you just touch your bum and it's gone. <laughs> Brilliant. I think we should all do it right now, actually. <laughs> and what's the good luck about the underwear? Uh, so if you... <laughs> God, this is all mad. Um, but <laughs> I'm not making got... these up. They're yours. I know, I know, <laughs> but if you've got, like, a big event or something big is happening in your life and you want to protect yourself from the evil eye, you just wear your knickers inside out. Oh, my God, I'm doing all of these. <laughs> these are brilliant. <laughs> Get them to scratch your bum. No, touch your bum, not scratch it. Scratch your nose, scratch knickers your inside nose, out. Bum. Yep. Yeah. This is brilliant. I wonder where you're doing all And my, has it my worked? My husband turns his knickers inside out because he doesn't want to wash them. <laughs> <laughs> but, OK, well, let's talk about the man. 
magpie thing. Because what do you, guys, you salute the magpie. So if you see one magpie, it's one ma uh, one magpie is for sorrow. Yeah. yeah. Two, yeah. Two, for Two for joy. Three for a girl. Three for a girl. Four, four, four for a boy. boy. Five for silver. Six, Six for, gold. for gold. Seven for a secret never to be told. No. And, oh my God. No. If you're in Australia, yes, yes, which, you're right. Yes, you're right. You're you right, know. You're right. All you're worried about is magpies. They're not going to swoop on you and peck your brains <laughs> out. Because they're nesting. Yeah. They're really vicious birds. But you have to. Salute them so you don't get the sorrow. Oh. Yeah. And if you see two, then it's joyful, so you're just happy about it. All yeah. right, I've got to change my mind. <laughs> I'm amazed you knew all of that, Adrian, because I thought you were not superstitious at all. I'm not. I'm not. That's the kids' TV programme, Magpie, that I grew up with. <laughs> <laughs> I just left that and said, yeah, I, I know all of that. But it's actually... Does anybody remember that programme? Yeah. yeah. One for sorrow, two for... Yeah. That's it's a the, song. It's a song. Oh. oh. Just... Not in Australia. Not they're, in just Australia. Screaming, <laughs> they're just screaming and running. <laughs> it's a magpie! We already had one single out that was doing pretty well, but we wanted to get everyone out at once. We worked out that radio only allowed three minutes 30 um, for a song, and we divided that by the amount of people in the group. And 21.99999 <laughs> yeah. or something like that came up, and we was like, all right, cool, everyone gets 21 seconds. And that's how the song was born, really. Mm. So um, you all wrote your own 21 seconds? Yeah, yeah, we all wrote our own 21 seconds. Did anyone cheat and try to go for 24? Or... No, nah, there was a few people that are maybe slightly over. I mean, it, yeah. it kind of morphed and molded after that. Do you, do you remember your 21 seconds? Of course, yeah. If, if I play a beat, can you give us your 21 seconds? What is that? <laughs> okay. <laughs> So here, here comes the beat, here comes the beat. Struggling, stay strong till I'm bathing. PA to the D's never phasing. I run into my enemies and be racing. You're chasing, so solid that amazing. And Gucci's are bound to be laced in. Addicted to this life that we're tasting. You blame me for the life you've been wasting. You're hating, yeah, there's money to be making. Actor MC, you know I'm raking. Smoking my cheese like a Jamaican. So while you're looking at me, you start taking. Created. Wow! <laughs> Just on the... Just under 20 seconds. Very good. Yes, yes. someone counting in the background. Uh -oh. <laughs> awesome. Brilliant. No, nah, embarrassing that one. No. No. Ah, wait, wait, wait. It's so good. Officially, the most successful female rapper of all time. <laughs> now, I, I hesitate to ask. I don't want you to turn green or anything. Okay. But did Twitter make you angry recently? Oh. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> told me to delete my Twitter and that's what I did. Okay. And and are you back on yet? No. No. And how many followers did you have? 11 million. <laughs> <laughs> that's a country. I know. <laughs> you you could have been a dictator. <laughs> Thank you. We do sort of like who are they following now? I, know. I hope they'll wait for me. Um <laughs> I know, I know they will. Can I ask, did you ever reply to anyone? Yeah! <laughs> I reply to people all the time. I'm known for that. That's why no, people... I don't mean like just now. I mean like, like <laughs> on Twitter yeah. because if you got 11 million, it's impossible. No, sure. I do, and I and I get to know them by name, and I I get a really personal bond with them. Yeah. Not all 11 million. <laughs> but you know, here and there, I try. I responded to at least 10 people a day. I would say. OK, that's not that many, is it? Uh, <laughs> that is quite a lot of time for Nikki. Um, Sorry, I'm easily, OK? It's called I'm Not Here To Make Friends. I'm Not Here To Make Friends? Yeah. Now, have I made this up, or is that something that came from going on dates? Yeah, I went on a date with this guy, and he just... People friend-zoned me a lot on dates. Like, and I went in the studio the next day, and I was like, I'm sick. Of, like, I've got enough friends. I don't need any more friends. <laughs> <laughs> and so the song's about that. Oh, OK. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and apparently the video for this song caused a bit of a sensation. Yes. <laughs> it's my favourite headline I've ever had. Oh, what was the headline? Yeah. I think it was Sam Smith horrifies OAPs. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, we, we basically... It's set in a castle. It's like King Henry VIII's castle. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Nothing seedy went on, guys. It wasn't weird. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing, but, but, yeah. but, but am I right? It was still open to the public when this was happening. Yeah, they had Christmas parties. <laughs> 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 yeah, they, they were working around us. OK. They had no idea what was going on in the rooms. <laughs> <laughs> they just... Oh, oh ooh. my... <laughs> Walking 
been to that after a couple of sherries. I love it, National Trust members. Oh! My dad's 78, I think he'd be absolutely delighted if he walked in. Weirder things have happened in that castle, let's be honest. You worked with Jamie Dornan. No, so what happened was, that song, Pointless, yeah. was supposed to be my first single. Oh. Right? Um, and I, I reached out to Jamie, handsome guy, as we can all agree. Yeah. yeah. No. That was a bit yeah. slow, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. I was a bit like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> We've just seen him in a hat. <laughs> 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 He's lost his lure. <laughs> it's actually, but we've never met before. No. So it's weird to see you, because I'm used to seeing you like Fifty Shades of Grey. Mm. So it's weird... <laughs> All right. <laughs> it's weird seeing you, like, here, mm. without, like, a whip in your hand. Yes. <laughs> and me... Oh, uh... <laughs> <laughs> and me without my cock in mine. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Lewis, it's great to have you back in the world. Uh, <laughs> oh, is that the time? <laughs> <laughs>